Hello, Dr. Hicks. <clears throat> this is uh, your patient, Amy. Uh, a fairly straightforward case, uh, but as with all orthodontic cases, let's ask these following questions. Uh, first one is, what is the Bolton discrepancy? Uh, I have done a separate video on that uh, that goes into where these numbers come from in more detail. Uh, long story short, this is the amount of space between the uh, between the two arches that either needs to be created or removed in order to get the two arches to uh, relate to each other uh, per the Bolton analysis or the Bo Bolton study back in the 50s, uh, which was done on a Caucasian population. It's important to know that that <clears throat> might not apply to different ethnicities. Uh, I don't believe Invisalign has necessarily teased out that information, whether it is relevant or not. Uh, but long story short, 0.36 millimeters is how much space we either need to create or remove in order to coordinate the arches. <clears throat> in other words, if we just straighten the teeth, we're going to have a, uh, just straighten the teeth and, and not create any spaces, we would have interference of the interior teeth because we have a mandibular excess. Sometimes you will see maxillary excess here. We're not going to talk about this side here, but this is just an extension of the measurement from the first molar to the first molar. So here, 0.36, that's how much space needs to be created in total on the upper arch if we're going to create space or be removed on the lower arch in order to coordinate the arches. <clears throat> we are not fans of any sort of retractive orthodontics, meaning uh, we want to give the tongue as much space as we can, although this patient doesn't necessarily look, look like somebody that needs uh, more space for their tongue. We don't want to create a problem that doesn't currently exist. Therefore, <clears throat> we want to add the space to the, to the upper arch somewhere. Where do we want to add it? Well, uh, that question comes down to an aesthetic analysis known as a golden ratio. From the anterior view, if we believe the golden ratio is an aesthetic looking uh, guideline, then we can use the measurement tool or the grid, measure the width of the tooth on number, number eight, and then use simple math to figure out what the width of number seven should be, again, from the anterior view. Uh, if we determine that the um, the space is, or the tooth is proper width, maybe we want to, we do want to add it to the distal of the, of the canine. But in this case here, I think we could all agree that the lateral looks pretty, pretty narrow. Therefore, we would want to put it around the lateral incisor and not distal to the canine. In addition, the canine is in good class one relationship. The tip of the canine should be pointing at the space between, actually that's the proposed treatment, sorry. Uh, the tip of the canine in the initial setup is relatively close to the uh, embrasure between uh, number 27 and 28. <clears throat> Obviously when that tooth is uprighted that will be the case as you can see here. Uh, moral of the story is I don't think we want to create the space back here because then we would be creating, be creating almost like a class 2 setup between the canines or class 2 relationship between the canines. So then the question is, do you put it to the distal of the lateral or mesial? And I think it, it really all comes down to where the zenith of the lateral is. If the tooth is well positioned, maybe put it in the center and then you would add composite or porcelain to, to both sides. Uh, but the easiest way to do it is to close the, the mesial space and add composite either to the, both the canine and the lateral or the lateral. In this case, I think the lateral uh, would receive all of the restorative material. <coughs> On the lower arch, we do have black triangles. If there is a situation where we are potentially going to use IPR, I think this is a situation where we might consider that. And the reason is it's more periodontally sound to have teeth that have greater contacts than to have these embrasures because of plaque trapping over time. So if we're going to create a good arch uh, relationship and we have triangular teeth, we're more likely to consider IPR in those situations 
uh, as a result of the periodontal uh, consideration or a combination of both addition of restorative material on the upper and removal on the lower. Uh, Dr. Hicks, you had talked about doing IPR on the centrals. I'm not sure what the rationale there was. Uh, my guess is that there's too much space here. If we go back to the Bolton, we only need about four tenths of a millimeter. So if we go 0.2, well, not letting me modify this. But if we were to go to point 0.2 and point 0.2, that would put us where we need, and we could remove this. My assumption is <clears throat> you asked for space here, and the technician saw that there was an increased overjet, and they decreased it by removing uh, on the centrals. Uh, if you're doing it for aesthetic reasons, because they're too triangular. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, I wouldn't remove those. I like the way the teeth look, but uh, that's between you and your patient. And as the aesthetic extraordinaire that you are, I'm sure you've got that covered. So that's that answers that. You had a question about the elastic setup. This is a class three elastic uh, setup. Uh, I understand what your rationale is. You were trying to <coughs> use the elastics to anchor the force of the anterior teeth to help create that space. Uh, in a nutshell, elastics are used primarily when you're moving posterior teeth and you're trying to get a uh, significant sagittal correction. If we look at the, the relationship of the molars, we have the cusp pointing at the fossa of the lower molar, uh, that being class one. If that difference is either two millimeters to either side, uh, that's when, in an adult, that's when it triggers for me elastics uh, to help counteract that. But the patient already has class one, so there's really no need for elastics. And the reason is the tray is gonna use these five teeth, number two to six, as an anchor to increase that space of these four teeth here. That's a very simple movement for Invisalign to do. <clears throat> so no reason for elastics there. Um, I will say that studies have shown a sagittal correction with clear aligners and elastics alone in an adult is very difficult to do beyond four millimeters of sagittal correction of the molar. So food for thought, something to think about. Uh, there's other tricks to solving sagittal corrections, TADS, reverse headgear. and other tricks. So that's pretty much it. <clears throat> I would probably have some sort of discussion about this uh, premolar here. I'm sure you already did. More or less the same over here. I would have Invisalign upright the molars as a way to resolve the anterior deep bite. It looks like most of the deep bite is being or most of the deep bite is being resolved by creating <coughs> more intrusion of the lower teeth by leveling the curve of speed. I would ask them to to lower these. The clinch check is going to look funny, but in conventional orthodontics, they use a wire that has uh, a reverse curve of speed form built into it. In other words, the wire looks like it's going to create an arch that is uh, dipping down in the anterior in relation to the posterior. We want to do the same thing with, uh, with plastic. So I would intrude these, these four teeth by maybe two millimeters and then the canine by a millimeter and then make sure you have ample horizontal attachments on the posterior teeth to counteract that. Remember, every force has an equal and opposite uh, reaction or um, reactive force. So if you're going to push down on the anterior teeth, the tray is going to want to push up. Teeth are not shaped in a way to hold them in place. So that's why we have to put anchoring attachments to counteract that force. Another way to ask for it is to ask for a zero, <coughs> zero degree overbite created by full intrusion of the lower teeth.
because you don't want to intrude these upper teeth any more than they already are because that would start to affect the aesthetics all right uh, last bit here use bullet points rather than paragraph form when talking to the, to the technician and let me know how this case goes thanks